Hey guys, Dustin here. I just wanted to do uh, one more video really quick. Um, kind of getting back into it slowly but surely. Um, I did post two videos a couple of days ago, which is a tour of my back cave slash fortress of solitude area. Um, so please be sure to check those out. Pretty interesting. If there is anything you do see that you like or you want more of a story of or more of a review of, definitely leave a comment below and I will definitely do a video for you. Um, but actually what I wanted to do a little bit off topic from DC, from bodybuilding, from all that other stuff that this channel has so far done four years ago to a few days ago. Um, I'm going to get off that topic a little bit of the DC universe and the bodybuilding stuff. Um, went to go s take my wife to see um, Ghostbusters 2016 version uh, for her birthday yesterday um, over at the movie theater. $5 ticket Tuesday at Marcus Cinema. Really good deal. She got to pick the movie. Obviously, it was a toss-up between that or Pete's Dragon. Kind of wishing we went to go see Pete's Dragon. Um, I'm not really going to give a thorough shot-for-shot, shot, story for storyboard um, as far as this Ghostbusters movie goes. I just want to give my initial thoughts. A um, couple things I liked, a couple things I didn't like, which were actually a lot of things that I didn't like. Um, but I just want to hit a few bullet points. So this is not going to be a very long video, maybe like five minutes max, if that. Um, but pretty much number one thing I'm going to go with that I loved about the movie is Chris Hemsworth's character, Kevin. He was absolutely hilarious as soon as he came on the screen, right from the moment with just the way he walked and clumsy and tripping all this over, over all this stuff. His ideas that he was coming up for symbols for the girls, for the Ghostbusters and everything like that. Just total 180 of what we're used to seeing Chris Hemsworth's characters normally portray on the big screen, primarily Thor. Um... It was really good seeing him out of that character and into a new character showing that he's very multifaceted with what he can bring to Hollywood and to these certain types of movies. Uh, he doesn't have to just be cast as the big hulky superhero type role or anything like that going forward in the DC or excuse me in the Marvel Universe uh, or any other movie for that matter too. Um, but yeah super funny super hilarious in all of his scenes. Um, even spoiler right here too even the point where he got possessed by the big bad of the villain who's trying to get all these ghosts uh, in New York released to kind of conquer the world. Um, when he is possessed in the Chris Hemsworth body towards the end of the movie, um, it's still Chris Hemsworth obviously portraying him and everything like that. Uh, just a different character now that he has to kind of portray, but he's still pretty funny with what he comes up with and what he says um, as he's being uh, the other guy through Chris Hemsworth's body uh, via possession. So that was kind of cool. Um, other thing I really liked about the movie, well, really quick, I do want to say the one thing that I kind of liked, there were a few funny parts with the girls, um, but that was about it. Very, very few funny parts with the girls that actually were kind of like, you know, actually made you laugh a little bit, um, but that's all that there really was. Uh, third and final pro for me that I saw from this movie was the subtle cameos of the original Ghostbusters that we grew up with, that we love, that is something that can never, ever, ever be changed or tarnished based on any movie that anybody would pretty much come up with. Um, first thing we see is actually in the opening, one of the opening scenes in the school, um, you see a uh, half-statue bust of Harold Ramis, um, Egon, from the movie, original Ghostbusters 1 and 2. Uh, I, sadly, Her Harold Ramis has passed away uh, for a while now. He's been gone. Um, but just seeing that little subtle nod right away with him in there uh, was really, really, really cool. you got to make sure you watch really closely. Otherwise, you probably might miss it. Um, but that is definitely really cool on the director's part to throw that in there. Um, next thing we see is uh, Bill Murray's character, who he actually plays, if you guys remember, in the first movie, um, that one guy who's all anti-Ghostbusters and he's trying to get the mayor to see that these guys are just fakes and phonies and the ghosts aren't real. They're trying just to stir things up to scam people and take money. That's basically who Bill Murray's character plays in this movie. Um, so he was in a little bit more than the other guys were, uh, but it's still really cool to see that. Uh, next thing we do see is Dan Aykroyd's character, and he's a cab driver. Uh, basically at the end of the movie, towards the end of the movie with the last fight he's going through and basically just saying... Um, as he's picking up one of the girls, like, he's not afraid to go through and do all this. He's like, I'm afraid of a lot of things. I'm afraid of this. I'm afraid of that. But I ain't afraid of no ghost. Uh, and then he drives off. Uh, so that was kind of a cool thing, too. Um, another character that we see pop up, obviously, uh, last Ghostbuster is, um, Winston, um, who is in the movie, Ernie Hudson's character. Um, he is portrayed by, 
um, the female Ghostbuster Patty uh, is her uncle, I believe, um, at the funeral home. And that was kind of cool to see him thrown in there. It was more towards the end of the movie. Um, we also see the uh, original receptionist from the Ghostbusters. She makes a cameo in the movie. Sigourney we Weaver made an actual cameo in the movie. That was really cool. Did not think we would see her whatsoever. Um, and to see her kind of pop up like that uh, with all the other guys was really cool. Sadly, we didn't see any Rick Moranis really show up. So he's kind of done with Hollywood and out of that spotlight. But... He was definitely a big part of Ghostbusters 1 and 2 as well. But all the other ones, spot on, perfect. Um, the cons of the movie, which is too many to really name for me personally, but all the comedy pretty much felt forced. It did not feel fluid. It did not feel natural. Like in Ghostbusters 1 and 2, it just happened, and it didn't happen shot for shot. It basically happened sporadically through the movie, and when it happened, it was magic with those guys. These girls, just too much all the time. Comedy this, comedy that. They really didn't give it too much of a break um, between their scenes and stuff. So for me that was a little too much, a little too taken away from the movie. Um, plot of the movie, uh, as everyone's kind of said, it's kind of like Ghostbusters 1, Ghostbusters 2 mixed together and this is what we have. That's basically what the plot of the movie was. Some things from Ghostbusters 1, some things from Ghostbusters 2 mixed together, and this is the new revised reboot of Ghostbusters 2016, is basically what we ended up getting. A um, couple other things, too, uh, that a lot of people have said about the movie, um, besides the comedy and everything being very forced and rushed, um, the story and plot line kind of not really adding up and kind of seeming wishy-washy. Um, a lot of people said the first half of the movie was very good. Second half was where it started losing us. And I agree to an extent to that. Um, I believe that holds up via what everyone else has been saying about the movie. Uh, first half of the movie was very interesting. I was captivated by it a little bit and intrigued. But second half of the movie, I started going downhill, downhill, and I started really losing interest in the movie. Um, if I were to give it a rating system, if I'm going to give rating systems, um, we'll say A, B, C, D, F. Um, just to kind of give it letter grades. For me personally, I would say I'd give this movie maybe a D. Um, it was a couple parts were funny. Like I said, Chris Hemsworth really saved the movie in my eyes, seeing what he can bring to the table as an actor, um, just within a different role that we're not used to him seeing him in. The cameos, those things right there basically saved the movie. Um, but unfortunately, it was not enough to totally save this movie, and we ended up with Ghostbusters 2016. Not Reagan on the movie because um, it wasn't the original cast or because they ended up doing an old female lead. Nothing like that whatsoever. Like I said, comedy just felt super, super forced. Way too much all the time. And it took you out of the story. And just being a mashup of some stuff from one, some stuff from two, really didn't do it any justice. But that's just my initial thoughts of the movie. Um, like I said, they want to give a full in-depth of the movie shot for shot. Um, but just a couple of little tid points, couple pros, couple cons. So I hope you guys really like the video. If there's anything that you saw in the movie, anything um, that you have to say about the movie, feel free to comment below. Anything at all, uh, definitely will hit you back. Um, touch base with you on anything too. So and don't be and be afraid, don't be afraid to check out my other videos on here too. And I like I said, I really hope to be posting more videos in the near future. All right, guys, thanks a lot. Take care.